Hey, Tim. Hey, guys. How's it going? What's up, Chuck? A lot of I familiar faces here. I love everyone's virtual offices. <laughs> hey, Tim. How's it going? What's up? How's it going? It's going. It's been a week. <laughs> we've had... Um, yeah, we've had the virus, we've had the earthquake, we've had uh, clouds of um, toxic, uh, noxious gas, toxic, toxic gas. What else have we had? <laughs> it's been a week for us. How's it been for everyone? Same. <laughs> There's a bunch of people we cannot hear. Like Evan, I see you're trying to talk, but you're... you're, you're you're gonna have to unmute. Yeah, it looks like you have the setting for people to join muted, which yeah. is a good suggestion. Y yeah, just been one of those weeks. It, uh, I will say a week that has required understanding that you might only get one tenth of the things done you want to. And mm -hmm. sometimes that one tenth is just holding things together. Uh, yep. and just uh, trying to make sure that we're being sensitive to being remote. Mm -hmm. I, I was given one piece of advice today that I really liked from a product manager. And he goes, keep a journal right now because these are some crazy times and it's reflect on how, you know, it'll help with the anxiety, but also it'd be cool to look back on the, all the details of everything that we're go that's going on with our lives right now. That's right. I like that. Yeah, I guess we can get started. And, and the, you were, we're talking about kind of what I wanted to lead off with. So um, I guess before I get there, let's, we'll just set some ground rules, I guess, or some intent, uh, some expectations. So I'll speak for a little bit. Um, not a, not a significant presentation. Um, but there are breakout points and zoom is cool because zoom allows us to, to create breakout rooms. And um, so I'll engage that we'll go and talk about the topic for maybe about 10 minutes or so, depending on how uh, time permitting. And then we'll get back to the group and we'll, we'll kind of share what we learned and then we'll go through a little more presentation and then we'll do that again. And it's a, it'll be fun to try virtual uh, breakouts. I've never done that before. Um, as far as um, participation and speaking during the presentation, just go for it. If you have a question, just go for it. It'll be a little messy um, as all remote teleconferencing tends to be. So if you have a question or you want me to, you want to ask the group or if you want me to, to go a little deeper on something or whatever it might be, um, just go ahead and, um, um, you know, don't hesitate, I guess. So let's just, let's kick this thing off. I really appreciate you guys all being here, guys and guys and girls, men and, men and ladies being here. This is, um, it's been an interesting week as we've been talking about. And I wanted to start off by mentioning that this, we're going to talk about high-performing remote software teams and keeping collaboration high um, while we're not co-located. But I really want to emphasize the fact that we're in an interesting time period where things aren't going to get done uh, as they normally would because there's a lot of uh, concern going on. There's a lot of uncertainty and, and even panic with the earthquake and other stuff that we've experienced, it just compounds things. And so don't forget at the, at really at the heart of what we do is we're servant leaders. And now is a time when there's, when there's uncertainty and there's concern, that's when servant leaders can really step up and, and show that they know how to serve and also to lead. And one of the ways I, I think we do that is by being um, compassionate towards people and not, not using this as an opportunity to figure out we're going to prove remote techniques. You know, I think we're going to talk about how we can keep things going, but be compassionate. It's not just business as usual. Things are different for the time being. Any thoughts there? Here, here. Okay, cool. cool. Agreed. Hey, Tim, I had some. Um, the other day I was listening to one of the um, podcasts, uh, the webinar is called Suddenly Distributed Effective Agility in the Age of Coronavirus. I don't know if any of you heard that uh, yesterday. 
Um, but they talked about in, in the time of change that's happening right now, we got violently thrown into work from home. It wasn't a work towards getting at home and getting things to work out. It just happened. So right. as it all happened, it's, it's in, I just want to emphasize, we are in charge of ourselves and we need to take time through the day to stand up and to get away from that computer screen for just a minute. You need to get out and you need to feel like you're being productive, whether that's just go outside, get some fresh air, look out a yep. window or something. It's so much better. And um, just really make your meetings feel like a meeting. Give time, maybe um, at the end of the meeting or before the meeting, just to really socially connect with people. Mm -hmm. it, has, it will go a long ways. That's right. Yeah, thanks, Adam. I appreciate that. And we'll get into techniques and we'll and, and in the breakout sessions and stuff that we can do just like that. So I appreciate that. Hey. So it's a great opportunity for us. Oh, go on. I was just going to ask, Adam, would you mind posting that link in the meetup group so we can take a look at that later? Yeah, I'll go do that right now. Thank you. Uh -huh. And we can, yeah, we definitely can share out some links. I've got some good resources um, that I've, that I've, um, watched and, and read over the last couple of weeks too that, that I'll share out to the group. All right, let's jump into this. Um, well, we know face-to-face -face is best, right? It says it in the 12 principles of the Agile Manifesto, the most efficient and effective method of conveying information uh, with the development team is truly face-to-face -face communication. We, re we, we live this and we and breathe this and we understand this every single day. Uh, and, in a, and in a perfect world, Everyone needed to get a, a piece of work, a, p a piece of product shipped, should be in the same space, talking and constantly collaborating. But the, the reality is today is that that we can't do that right now. You know, our buildings have been closed, um, our states have been closed, and we have to adapt to change. Also, what the Agile Manifesto talks about. So, because we can't uh, reap the benefits of our emergent discussions that we have through regular co collaboration and being face-to-face, -face, we have to be incredibly intentional about how we communicate with our teams while we're remote. So we know face-to-face -face is best, but we, we don't have that option right now. But there's a risk of going remote. Um, and one presentation I saw by the Scrum Inc. guys by Jeff and JJ Sutherland last week, which I'll, I'll share out to the group um, after this call, is Jeff talks about the risks. And if you're going to make the decision to distribute a team or a project, you are understand that you're inheriting some risk around reducing the likelihood of success, increasing the delivery time, and reducing the team's performance and increasing its dysfunction. Um, things, as we're going to get into, things are just harder when we're all away from one another. And thankfully, technology has bridged that gap but we still have to be incredibly intentional about it. And so knowing those risks, I think gives you a point um, of communication to start engaging with your team is here are the risks that we're embarking on as we do this. Let's talk about how we're going to prevent these risks or mitigate these risks as much as we can. Um, is this really business as usual? And I kind of alluded to it when I started. Um, one of the things, when, when my group of Scrum Masters got together to talk last week about how we were going <clears> to <throat> navigate this, one thing we emphasized was this is not business as usual. Um, and by that, I mean, don't expect your teams to have the same level of, of output, same level of collaboration as they would when they're in the office. Um, and if we, if we think that we're going to go into a remote environment and just all right, well, we don't need to address it. Let's just keep going through the sprints and let's keep planning and do things the way we were. You're, you're going to set yourself up for fail, for failure. And, um, you know, one thing, and don't just ask people, how's everything going? How's everything going um, in this remote environment? People will often say, great, like, I love this, no distractions, but they're really siloing off. And, and we know that people oftentimes love to be siloed off because it means I can just sit here uninterrupted and just go to work. But so, so just merely asking people how you think it's going, you might not get a very insightful response. And so it, we have to remember that things have to change as a result of going remote. And so 
if we're not having those those deeper discussions and what our risks and, and, and what things we're worried about happening, um, you're not going to get as much out of this because remote workers need to connect and they might not even realize it or admit it. Um, it. You know, they might feel like they're in fewer meetings and that who doesn't like to be in fewer meetings, but it just might happen that those meetings that we have are for the purposes of alignment and staying on track. And so the farther people go off track without checking in, they may be happy at the time, but they won't downstream as you try to integrate work or deploy deploy your code or whatever it is. And uh, Jeff Sutherland said, said something really impactful to the, the work for me. He said, co location makes masks bad communication. And what he, what he was trying to get after is teams will have a certain level of communication while they're face-to-face -face and they're collaborating and they might not be all that intentional about it, but it, it, since we're located in the same spot, things, communication happens. But the implications are that without doing anything different other than going remote, things could go off the rails on a team that was previously okay. So we have to be intentional. So we'll do our first breakout session. Um, how many, can someone tell me how many people we have on this call, is there a way? I don't, I'm not seeing it from my- 62. 62. 62. It's, so it's on, the partic on the bottom where the oh yeah, where controls it. are, there's a number. Okay, so now the next challenge for me is figuring out how to do breakout sessions. And here we go. Uh, bear with me as I figure this out. So let's do, hmm, it's not giving me. Yeah, I, I've I, done this before. It should give you a screen where you define how many rooms you have. And I think you can either manually or randomly assign people to rooms. Here we go. So how many rooms and I, do I think we you have? can just send them there. This says four participants per room, 15 rooms. Let's, um, let's do, let's crank it up. Let's do, um, let's do 20 rooms. Oh, excuse me. No, no, no. I want, let's do there we go. We're going to do 12 rooms. We're going to have five participants per, per room. And I want you to talk about that. The topic is what challenges are you currently facing right now? We'll give you guys about, um, 10 minutes to talk through this. I will just be jumping in and out of some of them participating and then we'll get back to the, to the larger group. You'll get a countdown, 60 second countdown. And then we'll talk about um, what are we noticing? We'll, and we'll see if there's any trends here. So uh, here, let's see what happens. Okay, they've been created. So looks like it randomly assigns them. Open all rooms. Okay. So then it looks like you have to join. Perfect.
Stuff's working, Tim. Gotta love it. We're coming back. Nice. We're we just can't hear Tim. Is lower. I wonder if some people dropped off. We had at least one drop from our group because of technical difficulties. Mm. I think she said hey, this still could be one of the highest attended events we've had. Yeah, well, some one of my guys dropped off in the private room too, but uh, yeah, so far so good. Yeah. It looks like we've got fifty-four from sixty-one or sixty-two when we broke out. So. Mm -hmm. And I don't think everybody that was originally on the call was in a position to participate in a, it sounded like some people were had to be on mute for other reasons. I'm just excited to have been in a session where we broke out. Me too. I've never done this with Zoom. That's a cool. Right. Yeah, really great. I'm taking this back. I'm an evangelist now. Did you have to have a paid version of Zoom to do the breakout? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I believe so. Yeah, I think you need to have a pro account. I know on one of my computers, it didn't want my audio or video to work, even though I used Zoom on that same computer earlier today. And huh. then I changed computers and it magically allowed me to join. Weird. I, I don't know. There, there, I had a case earlier this week where I had a meeting outside of work on Zoom and my microphone wasn't working and it turned out to be an iPad specific problem, physical problem. It said blow hard into the microphone and it, 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 it cleared the dust out. <laughs> that was amusing. Awesome. You sure it wasn't a breath analyzer? <laughs> right. I, I, I hope not because, the because these days there are yeah, yeah. chemical all, chemical substitutions to being happy that mm -hmm. a lot of us need. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. there so definitely technology was technology is one of the challenges that we face is getting everything working and now you know you have your home bandwidth to worry about a lot of people are saying well i can't do video because it's because my wife and i are both working from home and we're both you know video chatting with our teams mm -hmm. and it drags the chat down and so i can't plus go the kids face. are playing xbox <laughs> My dogs yep. keep angry barking at me every time I put them away for a call. I mean, how many <laughs> how many people have had a, a video call this week where th they saw someone else's kids run by, mm -hmm. or someone That's saw your kids run dressed. by? Yeah. My uh, product owner has a very chatty parrot. Actually, did not know that before. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a reminder, especially in this circumstance with everyone that have, has their kids home. It's a reminder that um, this is making it's making an impact and there are distractions at home that there pre, that there aren't in the office um what else did you guys kind of talk about hey tim along those lines uh and I'm, I, i've been finding people are very understanding right mm -hmm. so um i mean I, I, I was during your first segment i kept it all muted because my son was on his trumpet in the very next room right so, <laughs> um, but but usually i think i i want to keep uh, this this came out of the webinar yesterday from the Agile Alliance. You know, keep your keep your uh, audio on so when you move your chair, we hear it and we know what happened. Right? Uh, that we're we're just we're we're connected with what's going on with each other. But when the trumpet's going, I'm going to mute it. <laughs> yeah, Steve, for sure. Steve, what about when you're using the restroom? <laughs> I'm probably going to go on. Let's mute. agree to disconnect <laughs> while using the restroom. Let's just give ourselves the space. It's important. It's okay. Yeah. So I mean, I've experienced. Mute, turn off my camera and just say, I'll be right back. Yeah. There you go. That's Leave my, your device that's my at normal, your desk. That's my normal home office space, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so I've definitely, I've definitely experienced the someone being in the bathroom and not realizing their mic was on. That is, uh, that has happened. <laughs> So you know, one piece of good news is we are all in this together. I mean, literally, this is worldwide. And so everybody is affected by it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sure. off of that, I, I this is Michael. I just want to add, uh, I think the, the thought here is that maybe we're recognizing that we need to bring back some of the humanity to our work. I think this is doing that as maybe a silver lining. We all get to see each other in our unbusiness spaces. And 
to that point, one of the things that we brought up as a problem um, was the emotional side of things. Mm -hmm. Now we think about, you know, as agilists, how do we remove certain impediments and those tend to become typical for us. But right now, I think the emotional um, things that we're dealing with, and especially on the social side, the social interaction that we will, will tend to have is an impediment um, potentially to the things that we're doing. And we challenged uh, on, our, on our breakout that maybe there's a way that we as agilists can um, try to find a way to break up the monotony, bring some sort of social relevance back in this. And it doesn't even have to be work related necessarily, but how do we get a group of people who are distance, distant now to come together and mm -hmm. socialize again and, and, and be close to each other again and bring that human side of things back? Because I think of anything, right. that'll be a good reprieve from all of the things that are going on right now. Right. I think that's really good. Um, and I, as you were speaking, I was just thinking that I don't smile when I'm uh, remote when I'm like um, on camera, like in, in a remote environment, like I would, if you were face to face with me, I would engage differently, I smile, but I just, I have like a deadpan look because there's no one in the room with me. And it's just, it's just a weird kind of social experiment. Um, it's like, how do we have that human element when we're not actually here? So um, I, think, I think that's called a resting, uh, can't do <laughs> But. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they call that's why they call scrum bags. All right, so a couple of a couple of challenges of going remote: um, siloing. We don't pair as much. Collaboration decreases. People are more um, prone to just going off on their own. Um, less communication as people isolate. And I was expressing that I definitely feel more isolated and lonely and um, disconnected from what's happening. Um, as we talked about, being at home has its own stresses and distractions. Um, my kids are freaking out. My wife is getting angry at the kids, right? As, as well she should. Um, and it's just a different, you know, it's just a whole different world when you're at home. And you know, we're people, we have a routine. And I noticed something anecdotally um, is that I drink less water when it, when my routine is changed, I for the first couple of days this week I wasn't drinking any water, I wasn't eating anything, and I had only had uh, like 1,100 steps on Tuesday by 5 p.m. and yesterday I had 1,500 steps. That's like nothing, and so I'm not walking around as much. I don't. I'm not going to um, other people's offices or walking across the street or anything like that. And so it's like all these things that are happening to all of your people as well. Then there's fighting boredom and how do I stay focused with these new distractions? Um, do we know if everyone's doing what needs to be done? And then as Michael's talking about the, the human element, um, we, lo we lose emergent ideas that come through um, kind of impromptu discussions. So there's so many challenges of going remote. Um, and then there's some additional challenges being a scrum master, uh, being a remote scrum master. It's hard to read a room when you can't cap capture the body language. You don't get any of the non-verbal uh, cues. Um, how do you know that someone has something to add, but they're not speaking? It's very tough. And a lot of times in our calls, I've been noticing, you know, you've got half the people aren't using their cameras or more. So how do you know? How do you know they're even paying attention? Um, how do you know that people are checked out? You need to engage them or they're just being quiet, but they're really paying attention. You, you would notice that very easily in a, in a um, co-located environment. It's very easy to see if people are paying attention. So do you guys do any, did you guys have to do anything different with uh, contractors? Because at least where I'm at, like there was different hardware and whatnot be, legally or just based on problems they mm -hmm. had past so getting getting the access yep that would have been necessary for contractors yep. was is taking time yep yep we were we've been going through that too our, i think our the university that i work for wgu and they were getting ahead of that but they definitely there were access issues and vpn issues and contractor issues and so so the leadership within edtech has been meeting every single day at 2 p.m. to talk through these things. And so they've been mobilizing around it. But yeah, that stuff affects affects your ability to build and, and ship. Um, 
Yeah, a good scrum master talks to every everyone every day, and and how do you do that remotely? It's it's harder. You have to be intentional about it. I keep saying the word intentional, but it's really what I hope you guys take from this. Um, it's hard to do relationship building, um, stuff that you miss in the water cooler chat that 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 I love to do. It helps me get to know people, and then of course there's the big room facilitation stuff. So uh, my university is doing PI planning next week, and I'm really nervous about it, you know, because you're talking about getting at, at, at any point, at some point next week, we'll have over 100 people together remotely trying to figure out how we plan the next quarter. Oof. And how is that going to go? Um, it's going to be tough. And how do we keep the culture alive? How do we celebrate wins? Um, all stuff that's that's tough for us as a remote scrum master. So let's get, we're going to break out one more time. And we're going to talk more about techniques. Uh, let's see, it's about 12.38. I'll do the same kind of thing. And let's talk about things that you've been trying with your teams that have been getting them to be more intentional about their collaboration. What are some like neat little tricks that you guys have been trying that um, you'd like others to know? So once again, let me figure out how to get back to, how do I do this? I did it pretty effectively the first time. It's voice, it's voice activated, Tim. You have to say, hey, Zoom. <laughs> Send them to their rooms. Here we go. Here we go. We'll be the same rooms is what I'm curious about. There it looks like it is. I'm going to recreate. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to do Mystery. it. Um, let's bring it down. Here we go. Five to six. We're gone. And enjoy. See you guys in a few. So we're talking about techniques.
Hey, Tim, are you back on? Yes. That was really sudden. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. No, oh, did I? Oh, maybe I just did close them all. Oh, well, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was just per personally leaving back to the main room, but it's possible they all just closed at the same time. All right, we got about 10 minutes. Um, what did you, what were some fun techniques that you, that you had shared or heard shared? Well, one of my favorites was the happy hour. So at the end of the week, um, was it you, Kelly, that did the happy hour? Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, I just, you know, so you can have a drink, whatever your drink of choice, and just like kind of laugh and have fun. And, and uh, yeah. so that, I thought that was great. We actually had our, the CEO of Overstock joined us. <laughs> Fun. I joined I was the second one to join he was already on there and I was like where is everyone else like quickly please join <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it was fun what else what else do, is working for you guys I heard someone oh go ahead sorry it's delayed um someone in our breakout group uh, said that they'd been doing like a question of a day which I thought was really interesting like good way just to get people talking about anything really my favorite one in our group was um mary mentioned how at the beginning of the day uh they they just kind of have agreement that everybody says hello to start the day just yeah send, send a message to everybody let everybody know hey hi i'm here i'm starting work and something that you would get walking you know walking past somebody's desk where you go to sit down you know we don't do that anymore. So kind of an analog to that. I like that idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. your like mere presence is when you walk into a room and your presence is announced. We don't have that. So you don't even know like who's all on right now? Who's working? What are we working on? It's, you haven't had that moment to just announce your presence. That's a really good idea. You know, it could be kind of fun with that. Someone else suggested the idea of like making the standups funny you know, like a funny hat day or something. Maybe one of the stand-up days could be the funniest entrance. So you try and enter the video screen as goofily as you can. That's a good idea. That could be really fun. Has, has like anyone in a bright blue Dumb and Dumber suit? <laughs> <laughs> Who would be so stupid to do that? <laughs> has anyone have is has issues with uh, the way the different age groups uh like use the internet like so for example like uh working with like younger developers um they i think like i felt like they've used like technology different whereas like my older developers aren't i don't know everyone seems to be engaging in different ways yeah we set some norms um you know please use your video whenever possible please uh be willing to to communicate um Please use uh, Teams and, and keep your status updated, whether you're available or not. So some of the norms have, have really helped make sure we can know who's around and, and whatnot. Yeah, I wonder if it's a time to revisit kind of some team agreement. Yep. Yeah, that's, yep. Some, that's something I call out in our breakout and definitely I've done with, with my two teams. We had existing working agreements, but um, recognizing that this is not a business as usual time, um, we needed to walk through and we walked through all of our existing working agreements and just decided for each line, is this good as is? Does it need an adjustment for our new circumstances or yeah, are there new things we need to add to our list? Yep. Yep, for sure. So we're kind of running short on time. We'll just get through this. Um, just some things that I thought about is, um, yeah, as you guys talked about having those working agreements is a great opportunity. We should always be revisiting our working agreements, but, but it was kind of rebranding them as remote working agreements is a great opportunity to brush, to dust those off. Um, Jeff Sutherland recommends having your, going through your uh, scrum remote team checklist, which I will show on the next slide, which is helpful. Um, revisit or establish your definition of ready. JJ mentions that distributed work requires more discipline. And so let's have a more rigorous definition of ready. Um, make sure your technology is in place. Something that today went pretty well, and I realized how underprepared I was, and I'm, I think we're lucky that this went okay. Um, 
but making sure that if you're going to be facilitating things, especially if you're going to go into your PI plannings and, and you've got a, a, gr a group of, you know, 50 plus people, make sure that stuff is working. Make sure that people know how to engage with the technology. Um, here's your Scrum remote team checklist. Um, I didn't come up with this, but I thought it was very good. But this is the stuff that we should most likely be doing anyways, having small, stable, dedicated teams, having a ready backlog, especially now making sure you're not taking too much into a sprint finish early and then readjust um you're, you're probably going to want to take in less as you guys start to go remote especially with all the upheaval that's going on uh, in our communities having cross-functional teams swarming on things how, talk about how we're going to deal with interruptions um staying staying uh, um i guess current with te with technical debt making sure that we're continuously improving that teams are still happy and then I, the, this last tip here is the secret to remote teams is to make them feel co-located. And this is, goes back to Michael's point about the human element. But get creative with various ways that we can experiment to make people feel like they're still working together. Um, and who knows what, what your teams might come up with. But that is a great, great tip that I loved. And so as far as retrospective tools, here are some that some of you may have experience with. I know someone, Kelly mentioned Scatterspoke and I've used that before and there's some other free ones to be used. Uh, retrospectives changed quite a bit, obviously, remotely and, and here's some tools that can help. But I think as we kind of wrap this up, um, yes, and we do need to wrap this up. It's important to have compassion. And I, I'm gonna, this is kind of the bookend to what I was saying at the beginning, but we're lucky that we can work from home. That's not the case for a lot of people. Um, and it's easy to think that because we can work from home that it is just business as usual, that we'll just do what we used to do. Um, but have compassion for people. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of concern. Um, and people are dealing with that stress that they're, you know, of an uncertain world. So be a servant leader and don't make performance your number one thing. You know, show that you care. And then whatever we do after that, they see that we care, um, you know, it, the team will be better for, for knowing that, that we're starting with heart. So I leave you guys on that. Uh, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed hearing from people. Uh, I'll figure out how to share this deck out. And then I have other resources that I can send out. And we can share resources together in the meetup as well. If you guys have, um, if you guys have some stuff that you've been reading or stuff that you've watched, don't hesitate to share it there. So you yeah. guys all have, have a great one. This is awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for sharing your ideas. It's nice to have lots of brains on this. I'd say one, one more thing we're missing out on. Applause. <laughs> Thanks guys. We're all participating. <laughs>